JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, a Tony Costa Hyde to be housed in mental facility on bail. Matthew Hyde, the 20-year-old student accused of torturing his ex-girlfriend in his dorm room at the University of the West Indies, Mona, will return to court on Friday to continue his bail application. On Monday, Judge Lauren Cole Montague ordered that Hyde be further remanded after listening to proposals by his attorney, Peter Champagne Casey, to have the accused house at a private institution called Freddy's house during his bail. Your Honor, I'm not unmindful of the reality of all the factors. So the application for bail is not that it's really out of desperation because we want him to have bail. It's really with a genuine effort to see for once in his life what we think ought to be applied, can be applied, and see if it makes a difference, Champagne said during the hearing at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. Champagne said that as a father of four girls, with the eldest being 17 years old, he has a particular stance personally when it comes down to young men laying hands on young women. There can be no justification for it, period, he said. The attorney then presented a report from an assessment done of Hyde at the Halfway Tree Police Station by psychiatrist Professor Wendell Abel. He then asked for Abel to be presented in court on Friday for the continuing of the bill application. As he continued to justify why he was proposing that Hyde be housed at Ferdy's house, an adult daycare center for persons with mental health issues. In short, Matthew Hyde has never been given an opportunity to either sustain care for particular nature or treatment, and he has been, as it were, almost like someone from an early age in no man's land. The report is very, very telling, and in some instances, damning in relation to other persons, he said. Champagne also noted that while Hyde is confined to the facility, where treatment is administered, officers could check in on him. Another reason was that the immediate caregivers, Hyde's parents, were not in a position to provide that kind of accommodation. Given that only Hyde's mother has been attending court during the bail applications, Judge Cole Montague inquired about the father of the accused. In responding, Champagne said, Your Honor, I did indicate to the other primary caregiver that his presence would be of great utility. I believe, from his perspective, there is much embarrassment. Cole Montague said there would be need to be proof of a six or seven months deposit for the payment of the period being proposed for him to be housed at Ferdy's house. Reports of that Hyde held his ex reports of that Hyde held his 19 year old ex girlfriend captive for three days in his room and repeatedly beat and burned with a clothes iron all over her body after reportedly accusing her of infidelity. Hyde is charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm, malicious communication, and false imprisonment. Manchester farmer ambushed, gunned down on way to purchase cows. A Manchester farmer who went with a fellow farmer to buy cows in New Yarmouth, carrying down yesterday morning, was robbed and shot dead by gunmen. The deceased has been identified as 64-year-old David Noel Dixon, who is also a butcher from Robbins Hall in Manchester. The other farmer managed to escape unhurt. Reports are that about 7 a.m., Dixon and the other farmer travelled to New Yarmouth to purchase cows. They travelled in the now deceased Toyota motor truck. Police say they were in a section of the New Yarmouth main road when they were pounced upon by men in a silver motor car. The occupants reportedly opened gunfire on them from behind. Dixon, the police said, in a bid to escape injuries, abandoned the motor truck and ran. The gunmen pursued them and continued firing at them. The other farmer made an alarm and residents called the police. On arrival, lawmen found the lifeless body of Dixon with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the back. Police say they suspect Dixon was robbed of an undetermined sum of cash which he had for the purchase of two cows. Exeter police are investigating. The Exeter police are investigating. Two men murdered in Green Island, Hanover. Two men were this morning gunned down in Coral District, Green Island, Hanover. They are yet to be identified by the police. The attack happened about 4.30 a.m. It is reported that the men where construction workers from Clarendon addresses were at a premises when they were ambushed and shot multiple times by unknown assailants. The police were called to the scene. The men were taken to the Noel Holmes Hospital in Lucy where they were pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the killing. Two shot and injured near Price right in St. Andrew. Two men were shot and injured by bike riding assailants on Chancery Street in the vicinity of the now rebranded Price right supermarket in St. Andrew. According to police reports, at about 7.30 a.m., two men on a motorcycle opened fire on a man believed to be the target of the attack. Another man, a passerby, was also shot and injured. 
Both men are transported to the Kingston Public Hospital. One of the victims is said to be in serious condition, while the other is listed as stable. Superintendent Chirika Service, head of the St. Andrew North Division, explained that the assailants escaped into the neighboring St. Andrew South Police Division. We are in discussion with the police in the St. Andrew South Division as the attackers abandoned the bike. We seized the bike and it is currently being processed. Based on information received, the shooting is suspected to be gang-related, she said. Over 100 assorted rounds of ammunition seized in Salt Spring, St. James. The police in St. James on Monday night seized over 100 assorted rounds of ammunition during an operation on the main road in Salt Spring. Reports of that about 10.45 p.m., a search of an unfinished building was conducted and the following items were recovered. Four 12-gauge shotgun cartridges, 34 9mm, 6.38 rounds, three 7.62mm rounds, 57.22mm rounds, and 45 5.56mm rounds were found in a plastic bag. No arrest was made in connection with the seizure. Investigations continue. Chief Education Officer urges teachers to choose Jamaica. As teachers continue to leave Jamaica to pursue more lucrative opportunities overseas, Acting Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education and Youth, Dr. Kassan Troop, is urging those who are still here to remain patriotic. I want to encourage you, don't give up on Jamaica, she pleaded. And while I don't believe you should not take a decision in your best interest, I'm also asking you to always think about the greater good. And if you're able to still make Jamaica land we love, a place to live, raise families and do business, we want you to choose Jamaica with me, she said. Troop was addressing finalists at the Minister of Education Maths Teacher of the Year Award Ceremony at the University of the West Indies. Approximately 167 educators were reported to have tendered their resignations before the beginning of the new school year. While acknowledging the reasons that forced teachers to migrate through petition teachers to not become fixated on the difficulties of life and on their salaries and so forth, rather, they should take pride in the impact they have on students' lives. This is bigger than all of us. As teachers, we are serving a nation. We are unearthing talents. We are helping persons to dream and dream big. And in a bigger context, we are transforming the social and economic realities of our country, she said. Tanya Dawkins, an educator of 21 years, who currently teaches at the Port Antonio High School, was named Maths Teacher of the Year. Troop shared that she hoped the awards presented to the nominees will serve as motivation and an inspiration to others who will mirror the successes of the teachers honored. We have a responsibility not only to provide equity and provide quality, but to stand for justice for our learners, she said. We have a responsibility not only to provide equity and provide quality, but to stand for justice for our learners, she said. PMP Council reports viral video to police, dismisses resignation claims. You felt parcel. The People's National Party PMP Councillor for the Yorkton Division in the Clarendon Southwest constituency says he has reported a viral video of him engaging in a lewd act to the police's cybercrime unit. The under two minute long video showing the nude politician went viral on social media platforms just over a week ago. He said the video, which appears to be a screen recording of footage, involves a woman. The council says he was flung into a tailspin and remains shocked that the video went into the public domain. Asserting himself as a victim, he contends that his privacy was violated and that he is hopeful for a full resolution to the matter. At the same time, he is dismissing claims that he has resigned from the PMP and from his divisional and constituency roles. That's a lie, he quipped, when asked about his reported resignation as a member of the party and chairman of the Yorktown Divisional Executive. He acknowledged, however, that he was called for meetings last week with constituency and divisional officials where the viral video was raised. He claims that instead of receiving support over his ordeal, he was chastised and face calls for him to resign. Despite the Clarendon Southwest Constituency Committee reporting that the council tendered a verbal resignation at three different meetings, Purcell said he never submitted a resignation letter and therefore remains in his positions. When quizzed on whether he harbors plans to resign, Purcell said, I cannot say. He said he has been left surprised by reports coming out of the constituency that he has stepped aside. Sat in the meetings held last week with Purcell, where he indicated that he would resign. The constituency committee stated that it has acted on his utterances in which he committed to step down and thereby ratify the minutes of the meeting. 
personally accused persons in the constituency of unfair treatment and has since written to the leadership of the PMP to register his issues. The Clarendon Southwestern Constituency Committee has cited the content of the video as a misrepresentation of the ideals and morals of the PMP. The People's National Party's Constituency Committee for Southwestern Clarendon is aware of a video which features one of our elected councillors and has been circulating in the virtual space. It is without hesitation that the committee declares that the content of the video does not represent our ideals and morals or that of the People's National Party, which we so proudly represent, the committee said in a release. It went further to apologize to members, constituents and supporters. It is our responsibility as leaders to ensure that we maintain the standards of the people we represent and as such, after several meetings with the said councillor, we have accepted and ratified his resignation, which was communicated to us at these meetings. The release continued. The committee says the matter has otherwise been dealt with appropriately and expeditiously for the benefit of all. Purcell has been the councillor for the Yorktown Division since 1998 and stands as one of the longest serving councillors in the central parish. Illegal gun seized in St. Anne, two men arrested. Two men were taken into custody after an illegal gun along with ammunition was seized by the Brownstone Police in St. Anne this morning. They were being held on suspicion of illegal possession of a firearm and illegal possession of ammunition. The police report that about 5 a.m. personnel acting on information went in search of gunmen. The cops, who were armed with a search warrant, went to a house in Lincoln District in Brownstone where the premises were searched. During the search, a point three revolver with six rounds was found atop a piece of furniture, according to the police. The male occupants of the house were taken into custody. Judges reverts Pathways International's Andrea Ruddock bail application to April 24. Andrea Ruddock, the man accused of killing Tamika Gardner during an alleged sacrificial ritual at Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries in Montego Bay, St. James, on October 17, 2021, will have to wait until next month to know if he'll be granted bail. This is due to miscommunication on the part of court officers who brought forward the case to Monday as opposed to April 24, the initial date for the matter to be called up in the Supreme Court, to allow for the continuation of a plain case management hearing as well as the bail application to be made. Justice Winnett Graham Allen, who presided over the case, ruled that the matter be reverted to April 24. The case was before the court on January 11, 2023, when the matter was further adjourned for plain case management hearing on April 24 at 11 a.m. and also for a bail application to be made. The accused was remanded in custody. I understand that the court registry of the case brought forward because certain directions were given, but the matter is going to remain for the 24th of April 2023 at 11.30 a.m., Justice Graham Allen said. Justice Graham Allen was on Monday handed a report on Ruddock's antecedent, which he said would be crucial in his application for a bail next month. Ruddock who appeared in court in a red shirt, black pants, socks and slippers, was spotted and knotted an unkempt hairstyle, has been deemed fit to plead. And according to Justice Graham Allen, a trial date will be set when the case comes before her again on April 24. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.